Hey, this is Jason, and I've got some Mac OS tips for you today. One of the things I really love about the Mac is the ability to customize. And you know, when you get it, when you get a brand new Mac and you open it up, and the operating system's already installed, and you're all set up, you know, you can just use it as is, and it's great. But there's so many things you can do to customize and and make things uh, just the way you want them. So that's what we're going to look at today. I've got seven tips for you. Let's move through them quickly. All right, so the first tip is around Spotlight. And hopefully you use Spotlight Search already. Uh, you just hold down Command and hit the space bar, and you get this terrific little window here. And it's basically a way you can search for anything on your Mac and locate it, open it up real quickly. Um, but it's got a couple little features in it that are not obvious that are great for navigating around with your keyboard um, so first of all let's let's look something up let's say i'm looking for a background um, a picture or something like that now um, when you highlight a file in spotlight okay so so here's a, a file um, you can use command r here instead of just clicking enter. so if you hit enter it's going to open up that image file. There's preview, and there it is. Great. Okay. So let's do that again. But this time, we're going to go down and hold down Command R, and it will open up the location of that file, which is incredibly useful. So I've got it in the downloads folder and sitting right here. Um, so Command R is a, a way to do that. Okay, you can also, um, if you're not just using your keyboard, but you're using your mouse, you can't or trackpad, uh, you can hold down the command key and double click it. And it will also do the same thing. So super convenient. I use that all the time. I just want to see, okay, where is this file? Is it in the right place? I, I don't always want to open the file. I sometimes want to open up the enclosing folder. So um, you may have noticed this as well when we did this. When I hold down the command key, you see the little status bar, which also shows you where it is. Okay, that's convenient. So there's like multiple tips here in this first one. It's all spotlight related. Also, uh, holding down the uh, command key and then hitting the arrow down will jump to, the e to each section in the search results. So you see at the top, you have these sections. Uh, you've got top hits, images, other folders. And so if I hold down the command key, down arrow, I jump down to each of those sections. Okay, that's great when you want to fly through a long list really quickly. If you click one of these categories, okay, say images, be kind of obvious one, you saw it said show all, that's going to do a search on your Mac for images with the name background. Okay, so there's a lot of power in that spotlight search there. Uh, and you can use spotlight for, um, I don't know if you knew this, I do this, I don't even think about it. And I realized, hey, this is a tip. I should, I should tell people this. If you didn't know it already, you can do uh, math on this thing. You know, 234 times 32. You know, you could just see the answer there. Okay, so boom. So you've got some images you're looking at here. And, you know, you're, you're trying to pick the right one. Okay, which one was it? Um, this is the one. I know that because I get a great preview of it here. But you can also do a little bit of editing right here. Now, of course, I'm rotating the uh, view of the universe. So it makes really no difference which way that goes just as a side point. But if you want to mark up this image, um, you know, let's, let's pick one here. You can just click markup right here and it doesn't open up preview or anything else. It just gives you this pop up window with a number of editing options where you can drop in uh, some text and uh, super convenient without having to open up any other app. There we go. Uh, I, I'm not going to get too detailed here, but, you know, you've got all of your your uh, options for colors and size and. That's pretty slick. So, um, yeah, really great. So when you're done, you just save it there. And then you can just hit the space bar and it goes back. And you have edited the image without opening up any other apps. 
You're not having to go into Photoshop or anything like that. You're just done. And so watch for these little quick, uh, quick actions in the Finder, either at rotating it, choosing markup, and these are, are great ways to edit an image very quickly. I've been using another app for changing names of files when I have multiple files that need to be changed, need, they need their name changed. Um, often this is a, a case where you've got images and you've got a long list of images and you want to change their name. Uh, you, can, you don't have to use a third-party application for this. You can do it right there within macOS Finder. So you open up a folder window where you've got your um, files and I've got some sample files here. I'm going to select all of these and <clears throat> right click choose rename five items and you've got a couple options here um, <clears throat> replace text you know if you wanted to replace this text right here i was kind of playing around with it earlier um, but i think format's probably the way to go you can have name and index index is the number so i'm going to do a custom format where i want it to say um, test file and then have another underscore and after that will be the number and the number will start wherever I want it to I just change this here to one I do wish it would let me do zero one or zero zero one uh, because I could keep things in order uh, a little better that way alphabetically but that's another story so you can choose by the way which uh, where you want to put the numbers before or after um, since I can't put a zero in front of that number, I, I don't want to put it before. I'd rather put it after, I guess. Uh, e either way, I, I, I just wish it would let me put the zero. But let's hit rename. And there we go. I must have had it, mar <laughs> must have had it marked for before. <laughs> Is that what I did? I guess that's what I did. So uh, rename. Let's, let's try again. Yeah, I did. Look at that. Look at that. Let's change it to after. Yes. There we go. All right, this next tip, I've, I'm have i sorry if you've seen this one before in one of my other videos. is over a year ago. I, I showed that you can set up your hot corners in system preferences, okay? And you may already know about hot corners, by the way, if you want to find that really quickly, and really anything really quickly in system preferences, just type it in the search field, and boom, it goes to the right place. So there's hot corners right down here. So hot corners, if you don't know what that is, it's, hey, I want you to do this thing when I go to this corner of the screen. So open up Mission Control when I slide to the bottom right. There it is. Just show me my desktop. Clear everything off when I go to the upper right. Boom. There we go. Um, but if you want to set up a modifier key so that you have to click, like Command, for example, when you slide to the corner for it to activate, just click the menu like this and... Hold down command and choose the option. And there now, in order to go to the desktop, if I just slide to the corner, it doesn't work. But if I hold down the command key, it works. Number next. I don't remember what number we're on. Um, some of you may know that in iOS, on your iPhone or iPad, you can turn on night shift. And I think Apple makes it fairly apparent. I mean, it's, it seems like it's um, something they put in front of you a little more, but it's also available on Mac OS. So you can turn that on two different ways. One is to go into the notification center, which you can get to by clicking here. Okay. You can also just slide two fingers from the right side onto the track trackpad. And there it is night shift. So when you turn this on, uh, what this does is it Basically, it turns down the blues, if you will. Turn down the blues. Um, because there is some evidence that blue light messes with our circadian, circadian rhythms. Um, I don't know anything about that. I have some suspicions about it. But I sleep pretty hard, so none of that bothers me. I don't really use it a whole lot. Uh, I like dark mode. That seems to help me pretty good. But a lot of people swear by this and will turn this night shift on. You can see the screen kind of goes a little more yellow-ish. If you want to mess with how yellow it is and things like that, go into system preferences. And if you're like, I would never use this, just fast forward right now. Like, 
by 15 seconds. All right. Um, all right. Once again, search night, night shift options. There it is. It's in the display. Look at that. It's in the displays. Of course it is. And you can schedule it. Okay. I don't have it scheduled. I don't use it. Um, turn on until tomorrow, just manually. Boom. And then you can change the temperature. Oh yeah. Really, really warm, super warm. Okay. Or less warm. So you get to choose kind of how you want it to be. Um, <clears throat> again, I don't use it just because it, so far for me, that's the sleep is not an issue. I, I fall asleep immediately when I lay down in bed. That's probably because I'm just sleep deprived. Next is customizable keyboard commands for any app in Mac OS. Super helpful. Um, and I thought of one I've actually been meaning to set up for a long time and I'm reminding myself right now in Evernote, there is a command called duplicate note. I don't understand why there's not a command D sitting there. I want to have a keyboard command. And I've always said to myself, I should set up a keyboard shortcut for that. Now's my chance. So here's how to do it. And you're going to watch me do, I'm actually going to stick with this and I'm going to be using it. Go to system preferences. You need to go to keyboard. Now you can, once again, using this little hack, this little power tip, search for short, here it is, keyboard shortcuts. All right, so we were in the keyboard shortcuts section in the keyboard preference pane, and I'm gonna click on app shortcuts. And I want one in Evernote, so it's, it's an app shortcut that I'm going to click add right here. There we go. And I'm going to say it's not all applications. Actually, this is going to be just Evernote. So time for me to delete some apps. Jeez. All right. Um, in the menu title. So you got to type exactly the title, and it was duplicate note. And I want the keyboard shortcut to be Command D. And I know that doesn't conflict with anything. I'm 996 percent sure. And I'm going to click add. Okay. Now let's just close this out and go back to Evernote. And let's say description for let's, let's just copy this one. Okay. I'm not even going to look at the menu yet. I'm just going to hit command D. Magic. Yes. And looky there. Duplicate note has a command. So, uh, if you have some commands, some, some menu items that you want commands on, you can set up commands for those using this method. Okay, lastly, if you aren't using the shared universal clipboard feature in Mac OS and iOS and all of this, you're really missing out. I use this quite a bit where I copy text on my iPhone or my iPad, and I will paste it onto my Mac, uh, my Mac computer. So let's look at how you do this. Uh, first of all, you've got to go into here. Let's just type in handoff, allow handoff. So we're going to general and down here, Allow handoff between this Mac and your iCloud devices. So if you want to be able to copy text from, let's say, your iPhone and paste it into Mac OS, into a document you're working in there, you have to have all of these devices registered on iCloud. You have to be connected to the network, uh, be on Wi-Fi. And all of the devices have to have Bluetooth turned on because apparently Bluetooth is, is the way that it is transferred for security reasons. Um, <clears throat> so I'm going to, I don't know what's on my clipboard right now, but let's see here. Let's open up uh, text edit. Okay, I've got a new text edit document here, and I am just going to, I've got my iPad open. You, you can't see it. I, if it was really cool, you would, you would see me doing this. Um, but we're live here. This is, this is live. It's, it's live for somebody. Uh, just copy anything. I'm just using the little outline that I wrote out, and I'm just going to copy that off of the iPad. I'm going to hit copy, 
and beep bop beep ones and zeros now i'm going to paste right here wow and it brought in the uh, formatting that's really interesting i actually have a larger font so that i can see what's on my ipad in front of me so this is a great feature i use it constantly um, when i copy a uh, uh, some text, something somebody sends me and I want it on the Mac for maybe in a journal entry or something like that. I mean, it, it's super useful. If you enjoyed this, click the like button for me. And I would love to hear some comments from you on some tips you've been using, maybe related to this. 